Here's a few hard truths about judgment. A judgment of another is a judgment of yourself. If you can spot something in someone else, you have it too. What you judge in others is something that you cannot see, refuse to accept, or fear about yourself. I'm a clarity coach. That's my favorite title. Since the ninth grade, I was like, I'm gonna be the PE and health teacher at Whiting High School, and I did that, and that was fun. But then when my debt outweighed my income, I was pretty overwhelmed by that. And so I knew I wanted to find a different career. I was managing an LA Fitness and someone that I hired, she she turned in her resume with master's degree, uh, advertising at Leo Burnett's, which is a huge agency, and then life coach on the bottom. And it wasn't more than a month before we're working together at the front desk and doing the damn thing. And, and she's like, I want to invite you to come check out my coaching program. She goes, Everything that comes out of your mouth is things that I've been trained to say. Hi, I'm Abigail Gazda. I am from Whiting, Indiana. I am an ontological life coach and a public speaker. I love it. It is my passion. I work with people to um, live the best life that they can and really go after what they want to go after. An ontological life coach really works with people. Uh, we work on the someone's being. I was so amped up about this work. It was transforming my life. It was making me feel better and I couldn't share it enough. And I remember uh, introducing coaching to friends and family who I was very familiar with them not being fully satisfied with their lives. And so I said, you gotta check this out, come with, or I can coach you, or you know, I'll even give you some free work so I can practice these different exercises I need to do. and. And I was getting turned down. And I was like, I don't get it. You said you don't like your life. And I, I had to come to accept that some people would rather complain or talk about how they don't like their life than ever do something about it. Nobody needs fixing. I, I talk a lot about that in coaching, but when I see my people unhappy or sad and depressed or struggling, like. I would, I would give my whole life for them, those people to feel great. And where I am now, like I relate to everybody as my brother and sister, but you better believe that when I saw the people that I grew up with struggling, I, I'd do anything I can to help them out. So this tonight's power hour was a real chance to um, share a new workshop that I'm gonna be presenting called Permission to Be. And it's an ontological workshop in which we look at who we're being and releasing who we are into the world so that we can actually create our lives from who we are and the life that we want and who we wanna be. It's been really incredible to do this work with people because uh, a, a context that I have taken on in my own work is unleashing the hearts of others and this work does that it's really calling people forth to their greatest version of themselves the greatest version of their life and so it's the by doing this work myself and understanding I get to be me and celebrate and be that in the world like is allowed me to understand what it looks like and what it feels like to call people forth and help them unleash who they are and so that they can be creating their life from their heart and their soul. I coach people one-on-one, -on -one, coach people in groups and just different settings. And so this group being a little bit more reserved doesn't mean that they don't get the same thing out of it because just watching anyone's transformation, including my own as a leader, getting to share myself and that I'm a real human and I have these things too, um, being able to share that and then other people coming up and sharing their struggles or what they're going through or what their barriers are really allows everybody to relate to that. Um, we all as humans, we have a lot of the same foundational needs and desires and wants. And so to hear anybody share a little bit of themselves authentically has anybody in the room relating and getting something for themselves. Even if it's not the exact same story, it's certainly an example or a flavor of what they're going through. So it's an awesome chance to like know that that struggle or that thing is just a story and we can choose to move past it. I kind of realized like Chicago for me is probably not the place where I'm gonna help people grow and thrive. I just remember being in my apartment in Whiting, Indiana, not wanting to take another step forward, but also so deeply, such a soul level believing in my business and what I was doing.
and I moved out to California. I got rid of 70% of my possessions and I moved with what fit in my Jeep. It caused me to look at like what's important, what's not important, what do I want, what do I not want, and has really helped me to release a lot of things. There were literally so many things, a lot of memorabilia kind of stuff that I was holding on to specifically out of identity or in need to feel important or remember who I am, where I come from, because going through divorce really rocked my world. I remember being in so much emotional pain, so much turmoil. I was sadder than ever because I had never felt so rejected. And, and also just very confused about how, I always thought I was being myself and I was told that wasn't good enough or I don't want to be married to that. And I'm like, I don't get it. Like what could I have done better or different? <laughs> and so I, I was really um, being tough on myself and I was also trying to like fix it especially fix the way that I was feeling. I was actually working an MLM business at the same time that I was starting coaching. And I, at the peak of that business, I backed out of it. I was like, I can't hear one more no. My heart is so broken. It was post divorce, I was still healing. And so every no hurts so bad. And on top of that, I made it very about me. Every no was a no to me, not to my services. And damn, it hurt. It did not feel good at all. There were times where that was really tough for me. But one thing I will say is like, I could always see this fullest vision. And much of you guys who are probably watching this now are seeing things that I have been speaking into existence for the last four years. The new workshop I'm creating, Permission to Be. My name is Abigail Gazda, and I would love to invite you to the Permission to Be retreat. Hi, I'm Abigail Gazda, host of the Hearts Unleashed podcast. All right, you guys, thank you for tuning in. Today, you are listening to a brand new heart, and I would love to share them with you. When you do have a, a dream bigger than you, it, you just want to get back to it and get back to it. Never plan on being an author. <laughs> I'm writing a book. I'm so excited. So I'm writing a book. Follow the journey of writing, publishing, and releasing, giving up, giving up, the memoir of a quitter. Chapter one, answering the call. It's a guide back to love. Hi, I'm Abigail Gazda, and welcome to the Hearts Unleashed Leadership Academy. Hi, I'm Abigail Gazda, CEO of Hearts Unleashed, here to bring to you the Hearts Unleashed Guided Journal. I'm here to introduce to you the Time to Shine program. Today, I am coming to you to share the eight pillars of empowerment. Hello and welcome to the Velocity program. I have this insatiable entrepreneurial spirit that like I can't drive past an empty building without thinking like what I can put in there or seeing one need and thinking I can, I can, I can close that gap. And so I think that that's, uh, I can contribute the success of my business to that because I'm always, it's always evolving with me. And I, and I do love that so much. The coaching industry is generally male dominated and the patriarchy, like whatever, you know? And so um, a powerful woman, the world and society's relationship to a powerful woman was like that that pantsuit wearing bad bitch, right? Like, and that's not me. That's not who I am. Like, I love being powerful. I love being direct and clear and passionate. I had to shift my relationship with power. Position feels so much better. Perfect. Yay. The rep the way I choose to represent or memorialize my lessons in life are, are not so not so temporary. Self-discovery is this tattoo up here. Um, you guys have seen it in so many pictures and images and videos and all of that. And what this tattoo up here represents is wearing your heart on your sleeve. You know, wearing your heart on your sleeve and the fact that so many people look at it and want to look at it, I kind of take it as a they're willing I'm willing to be seen and willing to show up as myself. When enough of my coaching colleagues, I was going through my training program at the time, and enough of my coaching colleagues had asked me like, are you going to some type of recovery or therapy? And I was like, yeah, no. Like that wasn't a thing for me in my life or, or you know, it wasn't normalized in, in my world. And so I started going to therapy. I got divorced in February and I started going to therapy probably July. And it was during July, uh, not long after starting therapy, that I realized how okay it is to not be okay. 
how okay it is to ad admit you're not okay and that you're struggling. And when I finally did, I was finally allowed to think out loud, to cry. I grew up where you like suck it up, quit crying or I'll give you something to cry about. And it's like, huh, you know, <laughs> I have feelings and I don't know what to do with them. And so it was, it was a, quite a relief to use therapy as a tool to be able to do that and to be heard and to also get really powerful feedback from a professional. I can't say it enough. I discovered so much about myself and um, things that I didn't like and things that I did like. <laughs> Ooh, uh. It's the bones that'll really get you. You can get the meaty part here, right? Power is empowering. You can be empowered while empowering others and others are empowered by your power. As a woman going through that or growing, moving through the phases of power equals bitchy or bossy to power equals, hey, this is pretty cool. I like being empowered to being so powerful that you now start to feel alone and isolated. Like nobody is with you playing this game you're playing, especially as a woman. And I've talked to other men and women about their own evolution through power. But then we move, when you move through isolated, you start to identify with other people who are in that level, going for that level. I started to really accept how good I am at what I do. Took a little while, but damn, I'm good at what I do. This also kind of represents the self-development too, because when it comes to self-discovery, you have to own yourself. You have to own what you're discovering. If you don't own it, might as well send it out the window. And, uh, you know, we were talking last night about when did you, what was the question you asked me then? When did you become empowered or when did you know you became empowered? I went through a year long life coach training program, accomplishment coaching, and that was, it was great. I learned everything I needed to know. It was the finest coaching program in the world. And I learned so much, but I wasn't successful at getting clients consistently. I wasn't being, I wasn't really able to connect the dots. And I entered the landmark forum and the landmark curriculum. And I remember in the first day, the first half of the first day, I witnessed three or four people go up for some coaching and I watched the landmark leader coach them. And it was either exactly how I would coach them or I, I was seeing what they were saying and I was, I was coaching in my head and listening. It was LA, so people from all over the world, all different backgrounds and ages and genders and races and everything were coming together and sharing the same stuff, the same internal stuff that shifted my entire relationship with myself because I knew I have what it takes and it is about connecting and breaking down any limitation I have or barrier I believe in, in my ability to relate to the hearts of others, not the what's about them, the who that they are and relating to that and being able to coach them through that. It was also in the Landmark Forum where my business name and my podcast name like fell out of my mouth. It, they were asking like, who are you the possibility of? What are you the possibility of in this world? And I said, I am the possibility of hearts being unleashed. Around me, people have permission to be themselves. I went through self-discovery, started to learn, discover, own who I am, share who I am, and then development was all about becoming the leader, the businesswoman, the coach, the entrepreneur. And then self-mastery was knowing exactly what I offer in this world, being very clear about it, being very powerful about it. Self-mastery is about understanding the essence, the soul, and the ego, the things that get in your way from being exactly who you are, and that we can't be exactly who we are if we do not master every single part of ourselves. And uh, that, took, that took a solid two years. I, I had to accept darker parts of me. I had to explore darker parts of me. And so self-mastery is about seeing and accepting and integrating all of those facets. Damn, I love this stuff. <laughs> For the first time I knew, I'm clear about being able to do what I do. And then I knew for the first time that I could coach anyone on this planet.
I met her about a year prior to that, when she was an accomplishment coaching. I'd say I felt like a victim. I was very like quiet and reserved. I played small. It was just my way of being at that time, you know, just everything that happened. And it took me probably six months to actually agree to work with her, and it it changed my life. I've learned that I don't need to make other people happy. I need to live the life that I want to live to make myself happy. I'm not here on this earth to to do what other people want me to do. I, I just feel like I can do whatever I want and the things that make me happy are what I'm going to do. So I realized that my loving myself first also is top priority because once I do that, then I feel like I can put love out to everybody. So that was really the biggest transformation for me is to realize that I am most important and taking care of myself is, is top priority. That was a big part of my transformation. Um, so yeah, it's been incredible. Abigail told me like three years ago, like my transformation started three years ago. I ducked, I dodged, I did not want to transform. I wanted to, you know, keep living the way I, you know, not that what the way I was living was bad, but I knew I wasn't living, you know, to my fullest potential. And so she said, gonna have to come out of the classroom one day. And I was like, yeah, right. This is my bread and butter. Eventually, I did. She's coached me through a lot of difficult times. My father's death, abusive relationships, a lot of trauma, like childhood trauma that I hadn't confronted. Um, going to talk to my five, that five-year-old girl who doesn't like authority. Going to talk to that 17-year-old girl who thought that no one heard her. So, you know, with Hearts Unleashed, I get to have a voice. Um, I get to have a powerful voice. And so now I'm living in the present. I'm releasing, you know, those things of the past. Every day it's helping me to unleash my heart to bring more people into the fold, to just let them know that their lives matter and that they can have what they want in life and live free, free, powerful, and self-expressed. If, if I'm not teacher, who am I? If I'm not spouse, who am I? If I'm not manager, who am I? And uh, this is when, this was around the same time that I was going through my life coaching program and I started to discover the essence of who I am. I am heart and vitality and power and grace and light and that is who I am. And that fits in any what about me, right? Like I, teacher, sister, daughter, friend, best friend, wife, anything that I can be, I'm gonna bring the energy, the nucleus of who I am, of heart and vitality and power, grace and light. And I, I hold on to that and there were days where I didn't feel good about myself or my life, where I had to pick one. I had to say, I'm bringing power today. I am going to be powerful no matter what. Grieving is very important. I'll never step over that. I had to grieve over my divorce. That was a real loss. That felt like death to me. And it was certainly death of many parts of me. And so as I decided to shed and shed and shed and shed, I really was able to identify who I actually am. And then I was able to take ownership over who I actually am. And that changed the game because it took some time to release, release, release. There's a lot of grieving in that process. It's not just about someone dying, but like the actual energetic ending of a relationship or something, or even of your own identities. I believe in burning ceremonies as well. I'm big on fire, big on burning, releasing, letting go. That comes true for alchemizing judgment as well as being able to release the energy that an that a s actual substance holds and, and letting it, and experiencing it energetically leave your body as well. ceremoniously burning something to mark the end of it. I remember I did this uh, for my sobriety journey. I burnt some things and uh, burnt some substances. <laughs> endings, you know, we sometimes we have a relationship with endings as sad. Sometimes we have a relationship with death as sad. To me, burning and purposely announcing the end of something is, is much more of a celebration and an acknowledgement and like a, an experience of closing a chapter. My first ever experience with a burn ceremony was not mine. It was when I was very young with all the women in my family. Someone was going through a breakup 
And so all the women in the family got together and in one of my aunt's backyards and we uh, lit up a fire and everybody brought something from like a relationship or an ending and, and they like, sh we all had a share and threw it in the fire. And I, I like logged that in my mind as, as important or as memorable and and also valuable and and also a celebration the other major burn ceremony that i had was after di divorce we burned so, so a lot of different things that uh, signified my marriage and that was a really important experience and it was exactly one year uh, after my wedding it was should have been my first anniversary and it was actually a burn ceremony that pulled more emotion out of me than I had actually expressed that year. I was surrounded by family and so I've just always known burn ceremonies to be very important, memorable, fun, and empowering. It's for me, it's healing, it's healing work, it's again marking the ending of something and and just so important for moving forward. Something that I think we don't understand we haven't really been taught about is the way that we carry our emotional baggage and carry it with us through our lives. And I knew that I was doing that before I understood what completing something meant or what coming to closure meant. And now that I know different methods of releasing, I, I can set myself free by letting something go. I have experienced myself losing hundreds of pounds of emotional weight because I've become willing to let go. And yes, that represented relationships at first and things or people, but when it came down to it, when I started to release everything that didn't belong to me or had left already, when I started to release those things, I also started to see identities of myself that were ready to be released. And that just changed the game. I want to give everybody that encouragement that wherever you are in the grieving process, wherever you are in the life that you're creating, it's okay. It's okay and it's going to work out. You just have to hold the faith and the vision and stay really committed to who you know yourself to be and who you want yourself to be. And that might look at like shedding other people's definition of success. It might look like giving up what you thought you wanted for what is presenting itself to you as a better life than you could ever imagine. Because you guys, when I grow, are getting married right out of college and um, thinking I was gonna be a mom in Chicago with babies and doing the thing and living in, near my hometown in Indiana and all that, and that didn't happen, I came out to California and <laughs> I am living a life better than I could have ever planned for, but could have ever forced my hand at. And so you have to be willing to find out what's waiting for you by releasing what you're holding on to, because what you're holding on to is actually holding on to you and holding you back in your life. And so it might be time to release some of those, some of those, cut some of those cords, if you will. Coming to the last stage of transcendence, which is exactly what this tattoo represents, is transcending our humanness. So out of every challenge, out of all the things we've ever faced, all the things that I've ever faced, um, none of it's going to stop you. After divorce for a few months, I was in my old patterning, this like athlete mentality of suck it up, tough it out, move on, get over it, you'll be fine. And, and that wasn't working. It wasn't working, it didn't work. I was broken down, tired, I felt rejected, useless. Like, I was struggling, struggling to show up to some days. And especially showing up to try to build a business was pretty tough because I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. I was struggling with self-worth. And so, how long do you want to let something hold you back? How long do you want to wallow. I, there were definitely times where I let things, I felt like a victim and I will tell you one of my personal um, points of pride is I do not like to learn the same mistake twice. I do not like to take long to learn a lesson. I do not like to sit in self-pity. It has been a, a complete gift that I have to find the good in any and every situation, even in the most uncomfortable time is remembering, gee, I can't wait to teach 
can't wait to find out what this is teaching me. I can't wait to get garner the lesson from this because there is a lesson. And the quicker you can do that, the quicker you can transcend. Over the course of probably the last few months specifically, uh, I've been transcending in a way that I am very clear about um, owning my spirituality, owning my, my personal connection to God or universe or consciousness or source energy, whatever higher power anybody prefers, what I know it to be is love. The core of everything is love. And it's kind of fascinating because I knew that I knew those things even back when. And all of this transformation, this the blossoming part of this tattoo is about shedding anything that isn't true to the self and accepting all that is true and being willing to share it and show it off and live it out loud as to inspire others to look within themselves and find what's true for them. Alchemizing judgment is about constantly being able to receive anything on this plane and get it back to love so that we are actually a living, breathing, walking, talking example of what it looks like to be love in this world, love and light and good energy. This all encompasses the three pillars that I believe are the pillars that are the keys to winning the game of life. Integrity, alignment, and faith. And integrity is about cleaning up life, getting complete in your in your life and clearing old trauma, uh, finalizing stuff, leaving your past in your past, and then getting things again in working order. Alignment is where integrity and faith intersect. And so alignment is about you being in alignment with your highest good, the highest good of all, your purpose and passion. So I teach you how to identify those things. And then I teach you how to constantly align and realign and realign and realign because you will get knocked off track because in the phase of alignment, you are a wide open channel for that third pillar of faith and that core source of love that is constantly trying to manifest in this world. Thoughts become things. Something that I heard the most in coaching was you can have it all. Because at this point in my life, I have a thriving business, a thriving relationship with myself, a thriving relationship with my higher power, with the people in my life, my loved ones. Like that to me is having it all. And it's in holding the vision holding the vision of having it all. I go to bed saying thank you, 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 until I fall asleep and I wake up and it's right there when I wake up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I get to do this again. I get to have this again. I get to see and smell and experience this again. Thank you. Gratitude is having it all. Peace is having it all. Self-love is having it all. Of course it's gonna show up materially in a relationship, in a connection, in a business, in a career, in a salary, in a car. In a, like you can have those things. Those don't come first. You be happy, you be grateful, and those things certainly come. Yes, yes. In this moment, I have it all and I will have it all because I know that nothing that goes away will take from who I am. So yes, I have it all, you have it all, we have it all. What's next? Ooh. What's next? Great question.